Welcome back all six of you guys watching this tutorial series. Today's episode is episode three, Wheels and Tracks, as I work on the finished T3485. Let's get going. So first off, you'll see a little bit of the variety of paints I'll be using. I'll be using a darker brown, a lighter brown, <laughs> and a steel color. And first things first, always good to mask the wheels. This little trick I learned early on when I was working on, well, actually a German tank, because those things have a million, 22 wheels. But take some masking tape, mask off the front of the wheel after it's been base coated, obviously. And then just look at angling the airbrush just right so it only hits the portions of the wheel that are supposed to be either rubber black or steel. I like to use rubber black because this it is a great color that can be either used for steel or base coat for steel or base coat for the darker rubber color that was actually used by the, um, the tanks. My method for going about adding this color is the same as my other methods for applying a base coat to any other part of the tank. Take your time, build up the color, and then just wait about you know, 20 minutes then take off the tape. And from here, I'm going to start adding the same color, but going on the sides of the tank to get the sides of the road wheel, the rubber part, and also then the side where the steel uh, portion sticks out for the uh, wheels on the ends of the tank. Again, take your time. Uh, just, just enjoy the process. It can get a little fiddly, but use the side of your brush. It makes the control a lot easier when you're applying the paint. Once the paint's in place, I go and create my own artist graphite version of pigment and rub that very well onto the exposed steel portions of the wheels. And then I use that as a base or foundation for the pigments, the store-bought pigments that you'll see me add later on because those have a higher sheen to them. But I like to use the mixture between the two sheens of the graphite and the dark steel look that the AK Interactive pigments have. This is all just a personal preference. People will paint it or paint these steel wheels with aluminum color paint or steel color paint. I, for one, don't like to use steel colors for tracks or wheels because I just think it doesn't look to scale. I have really come along from using metallic paints for, say, like, you know, road wheels. Um, and then going from that sector of my painting to using more of the graphite approach or pigment approach because, I, to me, it looks a lot more natural. And once the pigments are in place, I go about adding my own little mixture of road dust or just dust effects. I used basically just water, a little bit of dish soap, and then some Tamiya paint or AK Real Color paint. Now you're probably wondering why dish soap and why all these stupid bubbles in this thing. Well, the dish soap cuts the surface tension. It makes it so the pigments from the paint don't make this disgusting goop. And this is actually a really good way to create some, you know, good dust effects. And now I will show you how I create realistic looking tracks. First of all, I always base coat with a dust color or a dirt color, um, especially over a, a black primer, because that way you have the nice recesses. And then after that's done, I go back over with a nice, like kind of a chocolate chipping color mixed with a little bit of black. And I dry brush that over the cleats of the tracks to make it look like there's still a little bit of exposed steel in this case. Well, in any case, just, you know, tracks are steel. And I just go over there just making it look nice and worn but without the silver paint. And you might have to go back over a couple times with the dry brush, but once it's done, it's done. And then I go about adding my mixture with the, you know, Tamiya paint or the AK Real Color paint with the dish soap in the water. And it creates a very nice matte effect of dust on it. And once that's dry, I go back to adding some pigments just to highlight the cleats of the track to make it look like it's just worn metal. And 
And here's a before and after comparison. You can see the left hand side is done, the right hand side hasn't had the pigments applied yet. But, and here they are both together, we have nice weathered realistic tracks without ever having to use silver paint. And that's the way I approach tracks. Well, that's all for episode 3 of Nerding Out with Jake, and I covered the road wheels and the tracks. Next time, I promise you, I will be looking at doing the oils and animals and filters and just going to town with that type of stuff on this tank. But until next time, have a great one. I'll talk to you later.